Okay, I'd like to tell you about elliptical orbits and the conservation of angular momentum. It turns out that when, to use angular momentum in orbits is uh, much more simple mathematically than to use conservation of, of energy. Not that conservation of energy is difficult to use, it just can get kind of cumbersome with all those numbers plugging and chugging. Whereas angular momentum you're going to see is, is much faster. And so um, let's take a look at angular momentum conservation. Um, can we agree on when is L, when does L equal L prime? L equals L prime when the net torque on a system is equal to zero. Okay, so let's take a look at an, an object that's going in circular motion or uh, elliptical motion. Uh, planetary motion it's moving around like this and let's look at it in these three spots um, that spot this spot and this spot okay um, it's going the fastest here just to remind you it's going the fastest here and the slowest here I'm going to draw the forces on, on on the difference on the planet the, the satellite in different spots so this is going to be the biggest force because it's got the it's the closest so it's actually got the biggest acceleration right here this the force is is smaller so I'll make it smaller so that's the force of gravity force of gravity is smaller and it's some intermediate distance here but if you look at the way I've drawn this these are all pointing in toward the center of the sun. Now here's the lever arm for this system. I'm going to draw that. That's R. Here's the lever arm. Here's the lever arm. And if you notice, how much torque then, if, if that, this is the lever arm and here's the force, how much torque is the force of gravity providing on that planet? How much torque is, well, torque is R cross F. And so you take the part of R that's perpendicular to F and you multiply it by F. And so um, that would give you zero torque, zero torque, zero torque. So the point here is that angular momentum is conserved. So you can say that, uh, let's, let's look at these two points here, A and B. You can say that the momentum at A, the angular momentum at A, is equal to the angular momentum at B. Well, the angular momentum at A is R cross P. So R cross P where R is this distance and P is the momentum vector. So the momentum, let, let me draw the, the velocity vector. It's bigger here. So that's VA. Whereas over here, this is B, B and it's smaller. Okay, so RA cross PA, or the momentum of A, that has to equal R at B cross the momentum at B. Well, at least for these two spots, and these two spots have names. If this is the sun, then um, the closer spot is called the perihelion, and the further spot is called the aphelion. And so um, I don't care uh, if you know those the vocabulary of that, but the furthest point, look and see that, uh, do you see how the momentum vector, the momentum's this way, and the, and the R are perpendicular? And same thing with that. This spot, the R is perpendicular to V. They are perpendicular. So we can say that, uh, we can just say that that's just going to be R A times M times V A equals R B times, I'm using all of the momentum I, It's because it's all perpendicular to R B. So it's M at BB. Okay, so um, that's how you solve this problem. So if you wanted to know, see how the M's cancel? 
this M is of the is of the planet that's circul circulating, and so uh, the M's cancel. And you got to admit that that's a much simpler relationship than the one we had before, that had all those terms in it. Here, I'll bring that back. It was this this long. You know, I started out E equals E prime, and this is just the E. This part's just the E. And here was the E prime. So E equals E prime. And it got messy, you know. That's that's a little difficult, cumbersome to use. Whereas this just goes to RA times VA equals RB times VB. You got to like that. Now you also got to be careful here. Because um, you, can't, you can't say if this is point C... I want you to know that RA, um, R, R times M times A, that's not equal to R at C times um, M times B at C. It's not, those are not equal to one another. And here's why. Do you know why? It's because um, the V at this point right here is this way. That's your V. V sub C. And so your momentum is that way. And you see how your momentum is not completely perpendicular to your R vector? Let's call that theta. It's not completely perpendicular to that. And so uh, what you need to do here is um, you can say though that R A times the mass times the velocity at A. That's L. That's the angular momentum at A. That will equal the angular momentum at C. It will, but the angular momentum at C is the following. It's R cross P. It's R cross P. And so that would be R times P times the sine of theta. So it's R times P times the sine of theta. So unless you know what theta is, unless you know what theta is, you cannot use angular momentum for a position like this. But angular momentum, angular momentum is perfect for the near and far points. It's perfect because they're at right angles. But an intermediate point, L equals L prime, really isn't something that you're going to use unless they give you this angle or ask for it. They could ask you for this angle and tell you these things. If they tell you this and this and they want to know the angle between the velocity and the R vector then, um, yeah, it might be something, it, that would be a way to go to get that angle. Okay, so the bottom line, just to summarize, L equals L prime is a wonderful way to solve a problem where you're talking about the near and far points. That's the way to go with that. All right, thank you.